warm Christian greetings to all of you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Hope everything is fine with Jesus amidst the COVID-19 pandemic that has become a part of our lives for six months now since January of this year, 2020. We consider this coronavirus outbreak as our number one enemy. The worst scenario is that we cannot see this enemy. And the scariest thing to note is that these viruses could be anywhere. It surrounds us in every corner of the day, and it seems that we are swimming in a pool of viruses. And we have to remember that there is no safe amount of exposure to these viruses. This virus is no respecter of persons. It infects young and old, rich and poor have suffered, even doctors and nurses became positive of this virus. Being aware of what has been happening around us in relation to COVID-19, perhaps we are a little bit worried and fearful, especially as we think of the rising, confirmed positive cases in our country today. Maybe those of you residing in the provinces at this time may not be as worried compared to us residing in Cebu City under the MECQ or Modified Enhanced Community Quarantine, wherein there are 26 barangays under granular lockdown because of the rising incidence of COVID-19 in this area. The reason why we are worried because our minds are preoccupied by COVID-19. When we wake up in the morning, you always think of COVID-19. When we listen to the news, we focus on COVID-19. And the more we think and talk of COVID-19, the more we are anxious and worried of our lives. But tonight, we have nothing to worry about COVID-19. But instead, thank God for what has become of our lives through the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The prophet of the Lord, Ellen G. White, says, We have nothing to worry except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us and is teaching in our past history. The reason why we are worried of COVID-19 because we tend to forget how the Lord led our lives in the past. We forget God's love, God's care, God's protection and interventions in our past history. Ellen White said, when recalling our past, the miraculous interventions of providence in our past, God's people could not help but be encouraged and strengthened in their present. Remembering how God had acted in their history would make it easier for them to reverence and worship Him. We have a song in our Isdi hymnal that we always love to sing, entitled, Count Your Blessings. It says, when upon life's bellows you are tempestos, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. I do believe this evening, as we try to recall our past history, we can discover lots of things in life that we can be thankful to God. No matter what may be your status in life right now, you can always find something to be thankful for. According to Albert Barnes, we can always find something to be thankful for, no matter what may be the burden of our wants or the special subject of our petitions. The question is, what are these blessings we have enjoyed in life so far that was bestowed by God to us that we tend to forget? Well, the answer is simple. I forgot. I forgot. But this evening, let us remind ourselves of these blessings from God amidst coronavirus or COVID-19. 
as we try to consider the psalm of King David in Psalm 103, verses 1 to 5. David said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Verse 3, Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. In this passage, King David wants us to remember and count his blessings. He begins by saying, Bless the Lord, oh, praise the Lord, oh, my soul, praise the Lord. And bless here means to praise. David is saying that this whole being should praise, bless, or praise the Lord. In Psalm 103, verse 2, David said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his blessings, all his benefits. David is telling us, his soul, soul, don't forget. Don't be unmindful or insensitive about God's blessings. Remember those blessings you receive from God. David gets it right. Because we tend to be insensitive and mindful and careless about the blessings we have received from the Lord, even amidst COVID-19 pandemic. What are these blessings amidst COVID-19 pandemic that we tend to forget? In your opinion, what do you think is in David's list, he considered as the number one blessing he received from God. Number one, if you were to choose one gift that surpasses them all, what would that be? Would you consider your spouse as your number one blessing? Your children, your family, your friends, your job? The blessing that top David's list. You know what? The first blessing, according to David, is the blessing of forgiveness. He forgives all our sins. Forgiveness is by far the greatest blessing we have received from God. And the more we are aware of our need for forgiveness, the more this great blessing will mean to us. Forgiveness means pardon. Conciliation of an obligation, a punishment or guilt. Somebody will say that forgiveness does not make you right. It makes you free. It makes you free. The good news is that the Lord is willing to forgive our sins more than we are willing to be forgiven. He forgives all your iniquity. In Hebrew, forgive means speaks of action, of unbroken continuity. This means that the Lord keeps on forgiving all your sin. And I am glad that God forgives not just some of my sin, but it's an every sin in my heart and life. Forgiveness is by far the greatest spiritual blessing God had afforded to mankind from the beginning. And we can read in Genesis 3.15, God's pronouncement of this blessing. God said, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This blessing, brethren, my friend, is more big enough what sin can damage. Through the death of Jesus Christ at Calvary, we became recipient of these spiritual blessings and become ears of God's kingdom. Besides forgiveness, 
What other spiritual blessings we receive from God amidst COVID-19 pandemic? I have here a list of these blessings, spiritual blessings. Number one is church at home. I like this. COVID-19 brought churches closer to our homes. We have unlimited access to sermons through the, in the internet, on the internet. It speed up the, the speedy preaching of the gospel through online. We call this online evangelism. And it generated revival and reformation among church members. And it promotes spiritual growth through prayer and Bible study. Let's go to the next blessing. The next blessing we have to take note according to David is this one. The blessings of healing. David said, He heals all your diseases. Not only one disease, not two, three, but all diseases. Imagine that. Actually, there are many and different ways that God works healing in our lives. How many of us consider ourselves fairly healthy individuals? For many of us, the Lord heals from all our diseases. By what? By not even letting us become ill. By giving us the gift of health. By protecting us from not contracting COVID-19. His promise is found in Exodus 15, 26. The Lord said, if you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in His eyes, if you pay attention to His commands and keep all His decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. What a good news! Jesus is the greatest physician. He is our healer. And this is the very reason why we, the Adventist community, live healthier and happier, longer lives compared to the general population. The question is, if this is automatically attained by God's people, is this inherent in our part that once we become Adventists, we enjoy these health benefits? No! Absolutely no! If we read again, the text says, If you listen, if you take heed to His commands, because good health, my friend, is a matter of choice. Good health is conditional. In this relation, COVID-19, therefore, I believe these precautionary measures really make sense because it is sensible to follow the WHO, the DOH, the government guidelines as far as precautionary measures is concerned. Naasay mo ingon na to nga mga katawahan, mga Pilipino na ingon, usahay totoo ka mani anak. Wala man lagi ko matakdi na wala ko magsunod sa mga precautionary measures. Tinuod man sa puwa sila matakdi. Pero the answer is simple. Kung wala ka matakdi, na wala ka musunod, ni ini nga mga guidelines, sa mutang yun kung misunod pa ka. Kung misunod pa ka, mahimo ka nga kublan ni ini nga mga balatian, ni ini nga sakit. Actually, the issue here is obedience to the health guidelines to the laws of health that if we obey we will be protected the guidelines serves as our protection and we Adventists are so fortunate that we have the spirit of prophecy to guide us in our lifestyle actually Adventist lifestyle is a blessing if it were not for Adventist lifestyle many of us I think would have died many years Ago because of lung cancer due to smoking and other related lifestyle diseases. You know, Adventist lifestyle delivers good health to our body. It heals our diseases. That's why we have the New Start, the celebration, New Start program. These are God's natural remedies. And according to Lindsay White, these are doctors from heaven. Nutrition, for example. In the case of nutrition, Hippocrates said, food is medicine. 
and let food be thy medicine. And that's true. We are what you eat. You are what you eat. And what you eat, what? Determines the way you die. Most of the deaths today are related to eating. Look at the word death. If you take out D and S, what happened? Death is it related. It's related to eating. The question is, is COVID-19 related to eating? Yes, of course. According to science, it originated in Wuhan, China. From a wheat market that sells exotic foods. And those foods were not supposed to be eaten. For this were contrary to God's plan. But look what happened because of intemperance. People ate anything they want, any living thing that moves on planet Earth. They ate because according to them, these are exotic foods. And as a result, they contracted the COVID-19 disease that has now become a pandemic problem. A lesson we learned from COVID-19 is that we must be temperate in what we eat. Because if we are not temperate, if we remove tea from diet, we take out tea from diet, the temperance, what will happen? We will eventually die because lack of temperance. Mrs. Ellen G. White said, I have felt urged by the Spirit of God to sit before several of the fact that their suffering and ill health was caused by a disregard of the light given them upon health reform. I have shown them that their meat diet, which was supposed to be essential, was not necessary, and that as they were composed of what they ate, brain, bone, and muscle were in any unwholesome condition because they live on the flesh of dead animals, that their blood was being corrupted by this improper diet, that the flesh which they ate was diseased, and their entire system was becoming gross and corrupted. Brethren, Good health is a matter of choice. Let us not wait until we get ill before we recognize what a gift God has given us in our health and thank Him for it. The next blessing is the blessing of deliverance. David said, He redeems your life from the pit. The verb redeems means deliverance. From danger, pit refers to corruption, destruction. Grave or this, David is saying, Lord, you deliver me from destruction. Whatever it is we face in life, we never face it alone. God goes with us wherever we go. And when we face setbacks and other trials, God turns it into blessing. God promised to his people, amidst COVID-19 pandemic is that we will be delivered. He will redeem, protect us from destruction brought by this dreadful disease. Just lately, just uh, the other day, I look into the recoveries brought by COVID-19. And here is this update that as far as active cases is concerned, do na nai about of 5 million kapin ka mga active cases. Ni ini, 99% ni ini na as a mild nga condition, but only 1% na as a serious or critically ill. And the good news is this one. Gitawag ni siya nga closed cases. Muni ang nakarecover o mungutan na ta. Pila na ini nga porosinto ang nangamatay. Now, ang total ng mga closed cases na asa 10,162,966. Pero dako kayog porosinto sa recovery. 94% ni ining mga active cases naka-recover pero pila lang ka porsento ang nangamatay only 4 only 6% ang nangamatay 
Nining nang amatay. Ngunta na ta. How many percent of this were Adventist? Pila man ni ining Adventist na ka, no? As Adventists, actually, we are not exempted. God did not promise that once we become Adventists, we will not get sick or die. Bag ulang just recently, published this Adventist Review. July 16, 2020. The 275 Adventists have died from COVID-19 in Southern Mexico. Died because of coronavirus. The article said nga dito kuno sa ginanga area gitawag nga Siapas, Southern Mexico. Daghan dito ang mga naapektuhan ni ini. Kani sa entero nga Mexico mukabat og 335,000 kapin. So akong gitanaw, akong gi-compare aron maklaro nato no. Mingunta nga pagkadaghan sa mga Adventista nga nangamatay, imagine na 275. Pero ato i-compare. SDA versus non-SDA sa Mexico lang. Ang confirmed cases of COVID-19 sa SDA, sumala pas balita, 4,000 sa mga Adventista ang na-positive ditong napita. Pero ang overall, pila, 378,285 sa Tibuok, Mexico, ang nagka-COVID-19. Kung kuhaan ni Moni Grisio, nga kung doon ay usa ka Adventist nga nagka-COVID-19, 94 ka buok nga dili Adventist nga nagka-COVID-19. Aritas nga nangamatay. 275 o 79 sa mga Adventista. Pero pila may kinatibukan ang kadaghanon sa nangamatay ni ining sakita. 42,645. That, that is 1 is to 152 ratio. So, meaning, if you are an Adventist, your chance of dying from COVID-19 is lower. It's even 0.65%, less than 1%. Ikumpara na to sa general population. And I count this as a blessing. It's a blessing. It's true that God heals our diseases. He will protect us, redeem us from destruction, from this dreadful disease. You know, another problem brought by this pandemic is the economic crisis. The damage to the economy that COVID-19 has inflicted on the world's economy has already been well documented. In the U.S., unemployment hit the record levels at 14.7%. Thousands of companies declared bankruptcy. Lakip na din sa Pilipinas. And in June, 30% of Americans missed their house payment. Salamat nga, doon na yung moratorium. Usa, duha, tulo ka bulan, why bad bayad ta sa ang mga mga balay runun. Sa kurinti, sa tubig, sa cellphone, huwag pa. And here is the impact on the economy according to that COVID-19 is causing health emergencies and economic disruptions that no single stakeholder can address. Nagdibog. Listen, na-experiensyahan na ni. You know, here in CBC, our tight income in CBC for the first six months of this year has dropped by 23% compared to last year of the same month as reported by CPUC. But the good news is that this money is still in the hands of our brethren and we are still waiting for the right time when it will be given back to the Lord. That's the good news. Friends, we have nothing to worry. 
The Lord promised to help redeem His people from the pit of hardship brought by COVID-19. To our fellow citizens, the government provided SAP or Social Amelioration Program. Our conference, CBC, received financial assistance from SSD, from CPUC, and just recently from SPUC that we distributed to our brethren who were greatly affected, affected by COVID-19. In Psalm 91, Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His throat shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt trust. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flyeth by day nor for the pestilence. What are these diseases? that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noon day. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Let's thank God, brethren, for this blessing of deliverance, protection in our daily lives. And the next blessing, I call this the blessing of fulfillment. David said, the Lord satisfies our desires. The blessing of life satisfaction. He satisfies the desires, not only our needs, but including our wants. He satisfies our desires with good things, so that what will happen? Our youth is renewed like the eagles. David reminds us that God's goodness goes beyond simply giving us what we need. In His great love for us, He fills our lives with all sorts of pleasures and joys that go above and beyond. Even amidst COVID-19, we still enjoy life to the fullest. Has God given you a job that you enjoy? A challenge that invigorates you? A task that fills your life with meaning? What a blessing! You know, as I think of what God has poured into my life this year, I can only exclaim, what a blessing. He provided all our needs, even our wants. And let me share tonight this unforgettable experience of mine. As I try to recollect my past history. You know, when we wanted to build a house, God opened the way for us. It was sometime in the last quarter of last year, 2009, that we prayed for a house. Believing that God will open the way, will lead the way, we started that construction with only 5,000 pesos on hand. But little by little, God unfolded to us His blessings. The first blessing was that by the time we needed a septic tank, God provided it to us because as we were excavating, we were able to excavate a ready-made septic tank in the very place where we wanted it to be situated. For 30 years ago, a Chinese Businessman was tasked by God to construct a septic tank for us. That if we have to construct it today, it will prob probably cost us 50,000 pesos. The second blessing was that by the time we needed 15 truckloads of filling materials, we prayed that evening and God caused the rain to fall so heavily that Saturday evening that what happened? Filling materials from Santa Lucia subdivision situated at Bulacao mountain ranges came down to our construction site and all we need to do was just to shovel it to our construction area. And the third blessing from God was that by the time we needed roofing materials, he touched the heart of a Korean dentist. And when I visited Dr. Wu in his clinic, he inquired, what's my problem? And I told him that I got a tooth problem. But he insisted, 
I know, Pastor, you have a problem. That's why you come to visit me. So I said to myself, maybe I will tell him my challenge. So I told him of our house construction that I need roofing materials worth 50,000 pesos. Then when you, he just smiled at me and said, just pray, you are a pastor. So we prayed together before I left his office. And the following day, while I was sitting in my office, the phone rang and it's the secretary of Dr. Wu. So he had, and he said, Pastor, Dr. Wu would like to see you. Please come to his office right now. So hurriedly, I went to his office and when I entered the office of this doctor, he handed to me the envelope containing the amount and he said, Pastor, God loves you. You are a pastor. Here is the money. I want you to remember me every time you look at the roof. What a blessing, brethren. What a blessing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for filling our lives with so many joys. He, wala lang kanya hatagi sa ato ang mga pangilang lanon, food, clothing, and shelter. He also provides us not only our needs, but even our wants. In the Bible, actually, there are 99 verses on blessings. And as I close tonight, let me remind you that, that the Lord had blessed us, what the Lord had blessed us in the past. He will also continue to pour His blessing upon us today, tomorrow, and even amidst COVID-19 pandemic. Exodus 23, verse 25. Worship the Lord your God, and His blessing will be upon your food and water. I will take away sickness from among you. Let's continue to worship God. Hold on to His promises. He is the author and finisher of our faith. In Deuteronomy 1, 11, the Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times so many more as ye are and bless you as he hath promised you. May God give each one of us that attitude of faith. May we always remember to count our many blessings so that we can sing with David tonight and every day of our lives praise the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me praise his holy name praise the Lord oh my soul and forget not all his blessings and benefits Amen Thank you.